Remember to click subscribe and notification button for more Abbas video. Cooking Appa. Hi, this is Cooking Appa giving you cooking ideas again. Today I got few giant river prawn. I think this is XL size. Uh, what is XL size? So this is a teaspoon. See how big the prawn is? It's huge, humongous. All right, and then of course, this is the beautiful part, the most beautiful part, the uh, tamale, the uh, butter, uh, prawn butter. Some call it prawn butter or tamale. Uh, now, one thing I learned about whenever you want to cook a river prawn is that do not defrost it entirely. Uh, make it half defrost, meaning I just uh, took out from the freezer and put it into the fridge. So it is softer, but it is not defrost. Why is it we want, don't want it to be fully defrost? Because the moment, the moment it's fully defrost, this uh, yellow butter here is going to melt. So um, it won't look as good, yeah? And you're going to lose it when you start cooking. So um, always do it half frozen, okay? So don't worry about prawn meat. Even if it's frozen, uh, it can be cooked very, very easily. And uh, seriously, I don't mind overcook, even overcook a little bit on this particular prawn because the meat is going to be a little bit tough anyway. It is a bigger prawn, okay? So, um, I have two huge XXL river prawns here and I'm going to make Sangha Yimin. Sangha is the river prawn, Yimin is this, the eggy noodle. This is already deep fried, so when I bought it, it's already like this, so it's very easy to use. You can use it straight away, you don't have to wash straight away you can use it um, I have three pieces of Samha uh, uh, Mi here okay uh, E noodle this uh, eggy noodle this is actually um, this is actually three pieces okay and then I have some veggie you can use any kind of veggie I happen to bump into some choy sum so I'm using choy sum usually at the restaurant I think they use I think most of them use the Chinese cabbage they use Chinese cabbage but I'm, I'm, I have some choy sum with me and this is one full bowl of chicken stock, very important, okay? Now, this is my uh, prawn shells, which I've, uh, I, 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 kept, I always kept my prawn shell uh, in my fridge, in my freezer. Whenever I want to make some prawn broth, I will take it out. So, um, if you don't have it, it's okay. You can just skip this step. If you have it, then it's better. It is always better if you can mix two kinds of broth together. So today, we are going to mix the prawn broth. I'm going to show you how to make the prawn broth and then mix with the chicken broth. And this is how you make your noodles gravy very, very flavorful. Okay? And of course, the, you need some um, fragrance. Yeah? So the fragrance will come from basically two items here. Ginger slices and also green ginger okay so these two ginger slices and green green onion sorry this is the green onion so the green onion will give you the flavor actually they are using most of them are using the young ginger but i ran out of young ginger so i'm using old ginger no problem there's no room in Sabah kitchen okay so uh, let's start by making the prawn broth okay let's start by adding some oil Probably about two to three tablespoon. A bit more, maybe. I can throw in about, let's throw in about two pieces of ginger. Maybe three. <laughs> I'm going to make a little bit of uh, prawn oil. Then using the prawn oil, we make the prawn broth. Let's wait until this is really becoming very hot. Then only we put in the prawn, okay? The prawn shell. All right, this is after about 30, 40 seconds. The ginger smell is really coming up. This is the time you can put in your prawn shell, but be very careful. This is very wet, okay? So it will splatter. After you throw in faster run away, like what I just did. <laughs> Make sure 
the wok and the oil is very hot. This one you cannot, you should not add in when the wok is still cool, okay? Make sure it's very hot. Ah, immediately I can smell the nice fragrance coming out from my prawn shell. Always keep your prawn shell in the freezer. They will help you to create some beautiful broth within few minutes. Okay, this step is very important here. You want to use high heat with some oil to really um, fry the, the prawn shell until it is fully cooked. Make sure it's fully cooked. If it's not fully, your prawn shell, if it's not fully cooked, later when you add in the water, the prawn broth will be a bit smelly. So you want to make sure it is fully cooked. Look at all this changing color to darker orange. And be very careful on the prawn eyes. If you want to be safe, you can remove the prawn eyes, actually cut away the prawn eyes. Because prawn eyes contain water. Oh, now it's very fragrant. And you look at the oil. It's already turned yellowish, uh, orangey. And the shell is turning color as well. Okay, easily you want to pan fry your corn shell for about two, maybe a minute or two at least. After which you can add in the hot water. Ooh, and hot water. Why hot water? Because you don't want to reduce the heat in your wok, okay? You want it to be very consistent. I'm going to let this boil and boil for like, uh, a couple of minutes, at least uh, three, three to five minutes maybe. Okay, so we will come back shortly. All right, this is after three minutes boiling. You now have very beautiful pork broth. I'm not going to off. The fire, we are not going to season it because we haven't started to cook the noodle yet. Okay, so I'm going to prepare a sieve here, a big bowl with a sieve. Slowly transfer my uh, prawn broth over. Okay. Now we have a golden prawn broth in few minutes, less than five minutes actually. All right, now we start to cook our noodle. Give it about two tablespoons of oil. And we are going to saute the garlic and ginger. Let me wash the leather. And few pieces of the green onion, the white portion. Not forgetting the garlic. I have about one to two tablespoons of garlic here. You decide how much you want to put. I'm a garlic person. So you want to saute garlic, ginger and red and green onion for like a probably like a minute or so. Oh, immediately you can smell the nice fragrance. Now we can actually put in the prawn. The reason why I'm putting the prawn right now is because anything that, any seafood that comes with shell, shell, you want them to have some direct contact with your hot oil then it will further create some very nice fragrance okay i think it's starting to turn uh, reddish yep and i started to uh, smell the fragrance coming out releasing uh, from the prawn shell and you also start seeing my uh, the prawn butter started to melt a little bit okay and then 
I'm going to add in the chicken stock. Let it boil. Okay, my chicken stock is started to boil. There are two ways of how you can do this. You can actually um, choose to remove the prawn uh, once the prawn is cooked. It's really up to you. Uh, personally, I don't have preference. Okay, so it's totally up to you. Some people will always say, Appa, you overcook the prawn, but seriously, there are some prawn which doesn't really uh, were scared of uh, being overcooked a little bit. Ah, super fragrant. See? Even though it's half frozen, but the prawn already started to cook very easily. Alright, I'm going to put in the prawn broth. Mm. Let's bring this to a boil. While doing that, we can actually do a bit of seasoning right now. I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of oyster sauce. Yep. A tablespoon of light soy sauce. A little bit of fish sauce. Not too much because fish sauce can be very salty. Small, small cup, maybe only half teaspoon. And I want to get my Saoxing wine. Ah! Saoxing wine will help to remove some of the uh, prawn uh, seafood smell, yeah? Saoxing wine, about a tablespoon. Actually, my wife and all the, my family don't really eat the uh, prawn butter. So, I'm actually re let, allowing the prawn butter to be melted into the broth. So the bro whole broth will be golden in color. Actually, this dish is almost done. I'm going to give it a little bit of salt. Okay. And a bit of sugar. Right. Few dashes of white pepper. The prawn is actually already cooked. You can choose to remove your the prawn right now, so that you can manage to save some of the prawn butter. I forgot to on this extra light. Let me on it. We oh, no more no more battery. It's okay. Let me remove the prawn and you still see the egg butter, right? the runny egg butter, beautiful, right? Take it out. The flavor of the prawn is already gotten in into the broth. That's all we want. Right. I hope you can see this. See how beautiful it is. Too bad I lost. Uh, my light, my second light. Hmm. Whoops. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so we'll put this on the side. Now we can actually add in the veggie. So, probably a little bit too much. I'll reduce it a bit. Wow, very seafoody and golden in color.
Okay. I think I can put in all my veggie. Never mind. It's okay to have more veggie. After the veggie, I'm going to put in the imi, the noodles. Actually, at the restaurant, they will just pour the broth over the noodle. They won't put it inside, but I prefer it to be softer. I prefer my noodles to be softer. You see, that's the beauty about home cooking. You can do the way you like. Do um, nobody is going to cause question you. Okay, we will come back shortly. Right after this is uh, fully, actually, it won't take too long. Very long, maybe a minute or two. It will uh, nicely um, soften under the broth. Okay, the moment you see everything, is, uh, the noodle has been softened, you can actually off the heat. And this is the time where you can actually put in some starch. Okay, add in some starch water, um, starch solution. And I always say it's always safer to add in the starch solution after you off the heat. Then it won't uh, crumb, uh, crumble up, yeah? Okay. I want to thicken up the gravy. I think we can uh, put in a little bit more star solution. Okay. So after you have taken out the gravy, that is the time where you can actually add in the egg. It's quite a good portion today, so I'm going to put in two eggs. Just gently beat the egg a little bit. Not fully, okay, something like this. And you can pour the egg inside. And let it cool by itself. All right, it's basically done. So what we need is just to uh, combine the noodles with my prawn. Not difficult, is it? Hold on, I f almost forget, I still have some green onion. You can just put in the green onion like this, okay? You don't really have to cook your green onion at all. Just use the existing heat to do it. Okay. Okay, I put my noodles onto one bigger plate. Uh, so Sorry, uh, let's put in the prawn you can see the beautiful prawn butter this is this beautiful river prawn I bought it from D market from Taman Desa this is not I repeat uh, this is not a paid or uh, sponsored video okay I just like their seafood their seafood is really fresh not cheap but very fresh the last round I bought from online, the river prawn wasn't very fresh. Alright, put the gravy on top. Uh, if you order this dish outside, it will probably cost you 150 ringgit. <laughs> Getting more and more expensive. Let me adjust the angle for you. Okay, so here's my uh, Sangha Imi.
the river prawn noodles. If you like my video, do share my video on your Facebook to your friends. Come to Cooking Appa Facebook fan page to click like and follow button. Follow Appa on Instagram and subscribe to Cooking Appa YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.